Welcome back viewers to part two of the engine replacement slash partial restoration of my 2005 Honda Element. If you missed part one, I'm gonna link that in the description and make it easy for you to find. But otherwise, I'm sure you've been waiting a long time to see how this all ends up. So let's get to the action right now, already in progress. Take it away, Eric. Eric, is this a suspension rebuild video or an engine replacement video? Well, it started out as an engine replacement video and now it's turning into some kind of weird element restoration, fighting with bushings, what have you. Let's get back to the engine stuff, shall we? Specifically, I need to get all the stuff on this engine that doesn't belong and replace it with the stuff that's on the old engine so that we can have a complete engine. And while I'm at it, I'm gonna see if I can do a valve adjustment right here on the floor. For starters, I'm gonna see if I can get this thing to sit a little more upright. If I can't, well, I can't. But if I can, that'd be nice. Well, that'll do. I will be using these newer coil packs also. really unfortunate that they bent this. I'm gonna have to reuse the tube from my old setup. This whole piece here is different. I don't have an EGR on mine. See if I can just swap over the plate. If I can do that, then I'll stick with that. But if not, then I gotta come up with a different plan. On this one, there's a really long tube coming out for the heater. Over here, there's just this short tube. So I'm just gonna swap this whole piece over. Hopefully there isn't a gasket issue. That house is damaged. There's no reusing it. And besides, I don't believe it's for my application. Oh, nice. It's a nice metal gasket. Totally reusable. Here's the old engine and the configuration here. The new engine is different. Unfortunately, I think this is an assembly for the thermostat. I think it's this whole piece. And it is. Sadly, I'm gonna have to replace it with the older one unless there's a way to like switch this from one to the other. Because of the way this is sort of hooked in there, I kind of wonder if I can just pop this out and put it in the new one. So it can get swapped out. Bolt biter sockets, man. That doesn't look that old. Do I really want to mess with it? Let me grab the other one. Oh, they're different too. The center part is different. So, though they may seem similar, they're not. We'll keep this one around. If this ever fails, well, we can always try swapping it out for this one, but looking at this and the rest of the inside of this engine, it doesn't look poorly maintained at all. I think it was a catastrophic event that brought it to where it is today. Anyway. Let's uh, get that pipe, because we're going to need that, too. We could always switch the O-ring over from one to the next once I get this tube off, so we'll have a new O-ring. Yeah, I think we'll clean this up and maybe swap O-rings. Something else that needs to get switched over, and I'm back here anyway, is this exhaust manifold. And I'm pretty sure, well, I'm not pretty sure. I think I can get these fasteners out. I'm gonna have to figure something out for this guy. Unless it's, no, hadn't broken loose yet, so. Well, that makes it easy. <laughs> if it just breaks through the rust, then no problem. Take a little bit of heat on this and at least be able to get the fastener out and replace it with a new one. This may also be required. 
since we're back here, let's also uh, get these two 17s. I'm leaving those there for the moment so I know where they go. Uh, there was one more thing that I noticed. I do have a VTEC solenoid on the new, gat, on the new uh, cylinder head, but it does not have this pressure switch. I want to harvest that too. I found a 22 millimeter socket fits. Hopefully this will sort it. Bolt biter. Not a whole lot left here. So I'm gonna clean it up with uh, a Rolock or something, get this down to some bare metal, and I'm gonna basically tack weld this back in. Well, if I can, if there's any metal left there to weld. But this will save me a rattle in the future from the heat shield, at least for a time. You can't weld dirty metal, it just doesn't work out. I'm gonna smooth this out a little bit so that it doesn't deform the heat shield when I tighten it down and then hit it with a little bit of exhaust paint, which is specifically made to handle these kinds of temperatures and also maybe help it with a little bit of the corrosion. Long tube versus short headers. I'm keeping that gasket. Looks like the same deflector is there, so I don't have to worry about that. Why wouldn't I use the new fasteners? I'm not using that. I believe there's only two more things that I need off of this engine, and that is this bracket here. Uh, this stud is bent on the new engine, so I just need to get this off of here. There's three fasteners for that. And this transmission. Other than that, I might just be done with that guy. And now we are faced with the ugliness of removing the transmission from the engine. And I say ugliness because this is the only thing holding the engine upright at the moment. The minute I remove it, the engine's gonna wanna flop over. So I have to be mindful of that because I don't really wanna hurt this. But at the same time, gonna need this transmission. There are one, two, three more fasteners. And you remember, we got some threads to repair on this transmission. Thank you, previous person who did the clutch and starter. You jerk. Yeah, all three of these are the same length. That one's long, that one's short. So short on the bottom, long on the top. Ooh, right in the eye. I forgot I took my safety glasses off for a second. I'm half wondering if it's gonna be better to pull the engine off so that I can lay it down gently, because I don't think the transmission is gonna move all that much. We shall see, but I'm gonna stay as out of the way as I can in case things go sideways, literally. Huh. That worked out better than I thought it would. Looks fairly new, but when I see stuff like this, that's an awful lot of clutch dust. Let's see if I can get one of these. I'd rather just get it and be done with it. So I was able to find the clutch that I wanted, but it won't be here till tomorrow. I'm gonna save this one because my brother also has a manual transmission. This one doesn't look horrible. I just, eh, eh. But this could save my brother some money down the road. So I'm just gonna go that route. For now, I'm gonna get that flywheel off there, clean it up, and mount it onto the new engine. Here's a super important consideration, and that is these dowels. These don't stick out a whole lot, so I want these to come out a little more. I wonder if they're a little bit shallow because it's a, it was an automatic transmission. Anyway, I'm going to get these out of here and then try to install the longer ones off the old engine. Since that side stayed in the transmission, I can leave that one alone. 
but I'm gonna try to get this one back. I have some of these, so it might work out, but really what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get a comparison between this one and the automatic transmission ones, because these look like they're sticking out farther. And if we've learned anything from past videos, namely the transmission that I rebuilt in my son's 2005 Civic, it's that if you don't have these dowel pins, it can cause the crank to be misaligned and ruin the bearings of the transmission, in particular the input shaft bearing. That might work out after all. Now this is the old engine. A concern of mine since the beginning is, well, the new engine's off an automatic and this is a manual, obviously. And I was wondering if the crankshafts might be different. So far I'm not seeing a difference and I'm grateful for that. This is the old engine. This is the new engine. And strangely, it looks like they've both stopped in the same place. And I say that because of this hole right here. But it does look like there's some kind of bushing here. I'm hoping my clutch kit comes with a new one of those. New engine doesn't have that bushing. This surface doesn't look that bad. I'm just gonna hit it with my Rolock disc real quick just to give it a new sheen to it before I install the new clutch. Remember this sensor that I removed? Well, that's gonna go right where that plug is. So I'm gonna swap that over. This one still has the seal intact on it. I don't wanna double gasket it. Clutch won't be here till tomorrow, but there is something I can do. Um, level the engine back out and then remove the valve cover and the plugs and do a valve adjustment on it real quick. There is something I forgot to switch over and it's this right here. This is not on the new engine, it's just these two 14s and it's mine. It's the lower mount for the AC. I would like to get this all cleaned up and ready for its new clutch. Take the shift fork out and prep all this stuff out. But you might remember we had a couple of bolts that had issues. This one is trashed and I'm gonna have to try to fix it. Now this lower one down here that was bad, I was actually able to find a replacement for it. So I can get rid of this one. Sadly, I'm gonna have to reuse this, which I'm not happy about, but I can fix these threads. So I've scoured through both of my tap and die sets, including my new one, and I have no 12 by 125, which is what this is, like either in a die or a tap. So I'm gonna have to track that down. Disappointed about that. Just, ugh, it's the little things that kill you. I do have this one, which I believe is a 10 by 125. I almost forgot about the new rethreading kit that I got. Uh, this one has 12 by 125. These are thread chasers though, which is actually kind of appropriate for what I'm doing. Not really tapping new threads, just trying to fix the old ones. That ain't great, but it's better. Rethread kit for the win. I don't love it, but at least it works now. Let's get this thing cleaned up and ready for its new throw out bearing and engine and everything else. There's just regular grease on here. I like Molly grease on these pivot, pivot points. This is that lower shield. Brake cleaner, it's linked in the description. Everything with the transmission is ready to go for its new clutch and new engine. Before I put the flywheel and everything on, I think it's a good idea now to adjust the valves. That way I don't have any interference with that while I'm spinning the engine over. I've already removed the plugs and I'm prepared to remove the valve cover. Let me show you the plugs. These are the plugs that came out of the new engine and they are excellent. Now they're not the iridium type that I'm putting in, which is not a big deal, they're still NGKs. But look how clean they are. Very excited about this engine. I've already done a video about valve adjustments on this engine that I'll link in the description for you. I'm excited to get a look inside this thing. And I'm doing the valve adjustment now because, well, it's easy to get to everything. Not that it's super hard when it's in the vehicle. I'll take any winds that I can. Oh. <laughs> I guess they uh, broke the dipstick off, but 
This looks very, very clean and very nice. Yeah, this is, this is good. Now these particular engines only have the VTEC on the intake side, but they do have the uh, adjustable cam gear so that it can change cam timing. So this would be eight on the intakes and tens on the exhaust. With that sorted, I'm gonna put the old valve cover back on uh, to avoid any damage or issues with the new paint that I put on the other valve cover. I'm really just putting this on here to seal things up. In fact, I'm not even really gonna tighten these down. I'm just gonna keep them snug. I'm also gonna put the plugs back in. Then we can install the pilot bushing, which there's a store to that guy. Uh, and then the flywheel and clutch and pressure plate. Once again, these are only to keep the dirt out. Part of the reason I'm going the extra mile because this thing doesn't seem to have a loud, lot of miles on it at all. This is pretty close to just throwing a brand new engine in this thing. It's not too far gone as far as the body and everything else. <laughs> I guess that's why I'm straddling the fence between restoration and engine replacement. I'm also somewhat practicing for when I do the Type R because that will be a restoration. So I'm kind of getting a feel for what I'm going to need to do, how much time it's going to take. And it's going to take more time than I thought and probably more time than that. <laughs> this is my new pilot bushing. And it's critically important, particularly when going from an automatic to manual like I am here, because this will not be in the back of the crankshaft, which is where I'm about to install this. But my new clutch kit came with one of these. Unfortunately, they left it in the box in such a way to where it got damaged severely and couldn't be recovered. So my local parts store hooked me up with this one out of one of their clutch kits, and I'm gonna be able to install it now. But if uh, you're doing one of these, you know, automatic to manual type swaps without this, this could cause issues with the transmission. This supports the input shaft, so it's super important that this gets in there. And for good measure, I'm just gonna check it with my clutch alignment tool. Ooh, that's snug. I hope the transmission goes in easier than this does, because that is snug. Here's a piece of crocus cloth. I don't know if the outer edge of this got rolled over when I hammered it in. Either way, if I can get this clutch tool to go in here easier, that'll make me happy. I just measured the input shaft on the transmission and it's almost 21 millimeters. I'm gonna check the back of the crankshaft opening now. So I think it'll work. I think my clutch tool might be a little big because my clutch tool, this is actually a little bit bigger than what the input shaft in so is. So this is just gonna barely work, but I'm glad I checked this. Previously, I was able to get a wood block under here. There's a difference between the manual transmission and the automatic. The automatic is shorter because it's only a flex plate. So I'm gonna reuse the bolts from the old engine. Just gonna put a dab of blue Loctite on the threads. Well, that seems to line up. Just gonna snug these, I'm not gonna torque them yet. I'm gonna take these to 80 foot pounds. Start this off with a final rinse. I'm installing an Exidy clutch kit. There's the number. Was looking for a Daikin, I like those also. Uh, luck, also a good one. That was a snug fit. I won't have to worry about rotating that too much. Also gonna clean the pressure plate. Gonna do the same drill here, just sort of snug things up. I'll, wait. I'll usually wiggle this, but this fits so snug, so I don't think it's gonna move around all that much. I'm gonna take these to 20 foot pounds. Let's hope that's good, because if it's not, it's gonna be kind of a fight. Let's get this transmission ready to install. I'm just gonna use a little bit of uh, molly grease. 
on this. And when I say a little bit, that's exactly what I mean. Well, on this ball pivot, maybe a little more on this. Keep that guy quiet. A little bit here also. This is Honda's white lithium grease. I uh, ran out of my other stuff that they gave me to do clutches with, but like they actually gave me stuff like this to do clutches with. And I'm just gonna put a little bit where the throw out bearing goes. Like a suntan lotion applications worth. I don't wanna flood it. So just basically coat the surface. I forgot one more place on this shift fork. I wanna do the molly grease. A little more. The point is you don't need to goop everything up. Then I will also take a very small amount of white lithium grease and put it on the end of the throw out bearing so that when it contacts the fingers on the pressure plate, it can move just a little bit easier and quieter. You can see I didn't use a lot of anything. I think it's going together well. I think the tire's the problem. But if I get all these bolts started, they're like, like dowels, sort of guide everything into place. Yeah, this is going together extremely well. I normally don't draw them up like this. I normally like to make them flush first, but this tire is pushing back in a couple of spots and there's not much I can do about it. It's going down on the dowels. I don't hear any significant resistance like popping or I don't feel it binding. It's just snugging up nicely. Like there it is, it's made it up. It's like they wanted to be together. Those two are together now. Hopefully they'll stay that way for a long time to come. I'll be easy on the clutch. I could have just replaced that stud, but then I wouldn't impress you with this. <laughs> I sandblasted it and painted it. I know, I've kind of gone off the deep end here. And they appear to have Honda Bond on them, which says they might go into a water passage. I'm gonna clean these up and get some fresh Honda Bond to install on them. Looks like the long one goes up in this corner because that, that one's raised up more than the others. I'm just gonna add a little Honda Bond to the end of the bolt. It wasn't really on the threads, it was just more on the end. If you're wondering what this is, this is what I plan to put my seatbelt around and I put this washer on to make sure that it stays put. I'm hoping this is not sticking out too far where I can get it up in the car. If it is, well, I gotta come up with a different strategy, but I didn't like going in here around the tensioner. It was just kind of awkward the way it was and I'm hoping this makes it a little more stable. This is a sacrificial bolt, by the way. I don't really care if it bends. And if I have to, I can cut it out on the count of its, uh, Nothing goes there. I've already taken the uh, old engine and put that on the engine stand so I can do the autopsy at some point. Remember, I don't care about this dipstick on the counter. The valve cover's not being used, but I do want to make sure that my seatbelt is secure. It's short, but I think it'll do. I guess the trick is, is sort of eyeball where it's going to go. And I think what I'm also going to do is position a floor jack underneath the transmission on that side. I think I'm going to put the starter and everything else on when it's up in there. Go back more. I'm just trying to look at the axle center line, using that as my reference on the transmission. Stay where I put you. Yeah, it feels about right. I think that went pretty well. 
Although I think I'm over this way a little too much, but we'll find out in a minute. Oh, be nice AC compressor. Yeah, it's gotta go over this way. very carefully trying to guide that AC compressor past everything. I also lock the parking brake so when I let it down and the rear wheels touch it doesn't move forward or backward. At least that's my intent. All right AC compressor's in a good spot. I think we're ready to keep going. The stupid AC compressor like the cause of all the issues. That's pretty close to like everything. Ooh, I forgot. I didn't get this stud off of here. I'm gonna do that now so that this can help guide the transmission up. Looking good so far though. I got that stud back in. Now there's two over there. Hopefully that will help get things where they need to be. Fingers crossed. So my bolt hanger is barely clearing and it's kind of sitting on top of the hard power steering line. I don't want to break that. There's a little 10 millimeter down in here that I'm going to remove so that I can sort of move the line around and keep it out of harm's way. Now I can move around. If it's stationary, it could get crushed. And this is the type of thing that you got to watch out for when doing this work. You don't want to make more work for yourself. Excellent. Oops, new engine's in there. That bolt barely worked, but it worked. I'm just gonna need to reattach that power steering line. Otherwise, it doesn't appear that anything was harmed in the installation of this engine. Given that I've already covered disassembly in detail, I'm not gonna cover the assembly in as much detail. Probably give you another time lapse of that. Get this all together. I'm sure you wanna know what I wanna know, what it's gonna be when it fires up. When I get the valve cover off, I'm going to pour in, well, I'm going to check to see if it has any, any oil in it. I'm going to empty it out if it does, and then I'm going to pour my oil in with the valve cover off over the valve train to make sure that that's all lubricated in the timing chain and everything as well. Additionally, remember that rusty tube that I took off for the heater hoses? Well, it's been reconditioned, and I've taken the new O-ring and put it on here. I also went through and sandblasted this piece just because I thought it would look better. But really, it's just a matter of getting all this up in there. And I'm going to spend a lot less time doing that if I'm not chasing a camera around doing it. Welcome back viewers. I am almost there, not quite. I was working along while it, I'm not sure exactly where the camera's cut out, but I got the uh, subframe in, the engine's in, the transmission's in, and I got some oil in the engine. In fact, uh, I might've mentioned this already, but 
I took the valve cover off, the old valve cover, and before I put the new one on, I drizzled a bunch of uh, new oil all over the camshafts and the timing chain and everything to try to make sure that the oil got down in there. Uh, but I got, well, tired and hungry, so I went home and I'm back here today and I don't have a whole lot to do. I'll show you what I've done and uh, well, we'll get back to work and get this thing started up. Check out that subframe, right? It looks good. I think that was really worth it uh, with all that effort. Now it did seem a little easier to put up in there without the uh, lower control arms attached. Although what I've done in the past is I've hooked the ball joints in to help hold it in place while I run the four bolts in that hold it in there. And speaking of those four bolts, I ran those through the sandblaster and then I coated them with WD-40 to help prevent corrosion in the future. Uh, but this, this gives it an OE look, you know, cause this is how they look, except for like when at the factory, they put like little paint marks on these to verify that they've been torqued to spec so that when it goes down the line, they know that somebody has done something. In fact, uh, you might see one here on the coil spring. You might see that one right there. That's just one, you find them all over the vehicle. But anyway, uh, not too much to do under here. I still have to fill the transmission up with some fluid. The engine, I did put some oil in it. And as I mentioned, I removed the old valve cover and just sort of drizzled oil over the top of the camshaft and the timing chain and everything to try to get some oil down in there before I started up for the first time, but very happy with that. New engine mount here in the front that you can probably see. And let's go up top. Looks very happy in its new home, doesn't it? That new valve cover turned out nicely. It kind of sets things off. And if you're concerned about this dirt, there's a cover over all this. So I'm not, I'm not concerned. I also uh, went through, you might've noticed and cleaned the, these tubes and ran them through the sandblaster and, and painted them. Once again, practice restoration. Everything is pretty well in here and connected. Uh, the thing that I had the most trouble with was all of this down here, this bracket tree and all this kind of stuff. But <laughs> I got partway through it and I'd been fiddling with it for like a half hour trying to figure out exactly how these things went back into place. Then I realized I drove an element here and I might as well go out and just look at it as reference, which I did. And I got every, all the wiring and everything exactly like it was. So that's all sorted. But that was the most difficulty that I had in that regard. Otherwise, there's just a few more things to get in here and put together and uh, we'll be ready. I think this is gonna be a time lapse until we get to the end. I wanna keep my momentum going, get this thing put together, get all the fluids in it and, and focus on what I'm doing. And then we'll circle back at the end, start it up for the first time and see how it runs. I'm excited. How about you? Keep watching. Well, viewers, after all that work, it's finally time to start it up. Let's do this. That started right up. You can definitely tell it wants to live. Looks good, sounds good. I don't see a drop of anything coming out of it. Maybe I did it. I did it. <laughs> that is smooth, quiet, and happy. Just gonna let it warm up. Burn off some of this stuff. We'll get the cooling system let out. We'll get the wheels back on it. I'll tighten up the suspension. 
and then take it out in the parking lot for a little spin. No check engine lights or anything either. Fantastic. This really does sound awesome. I mean, there's still some maintenance things I'd like to do, but I mean, that thing is solid as a rock. Maintenance things like change the power steering fluid and the brake fluid and the clutch fluid and do some other stuff, but I am extremely happy with where this is at. I wasn't expecting the airbag light, but that's not related to anything I did. I'll have to pull that code. It just gets better the longer it runs. I'm gonna bleed the cooling system now. I did open up the door to let some of this stuff out because not only is the engine new and covered with gook that's burning off, but new exhaust also. Anyway, um, it runs and idles fine. Uh, only one of the cooling fans came on, so I tried the AC to see if the other cooling fan would come on, the condenser fan. It does not. Additionally, the AC compressor, whenever it tries to engage, like really brings the engine down like it wants to die and then it disengages. It's sort of acting like there's a problem with the AC too. So my work is not over, unfortunately, uh, but at least it's over as far as the engine and I'll be able to drive it. But if I want AC, it sounds like, well, I'm gonna have to do some more stuff and figure it out. Anyway, I'm gonna get this thing buttoned up and then we'll take it out for a little drive and then we'll wrap this up. There it is, the finished product. I'm proud of it. I think it worked out well. And yes, I installed the catalytic converter security system. I know it's an aftermarket converter, but still, I don't want people messing with it. Want to take it for a spin around the parking lot? Let's do that. That clutch feels great. Like great. Now, I don't have it registered yet, so I'm just going to go around the parking lot. Oh yeah. Feels great. I hate the way the brakes feel, but it runs and drives excellent. I know I don't have my seatbelt on, but I'm not on the road and I'm not going fast. Shush. Yeah, I'm gonna have to work on those brakes, but this engine's great. It's quiet. Can't even tell it's running. It's like, is it on? Is it even on? I like that. Well, we do have some other work to do, but I think the major part of it is done. Glad to be past that. I'm happy. That was kind of epic for sure, but the result, well, the result is great. Now I still have some work to do. Uh, there are other things, and I often find this when I picked up a new used vehicle that I need to go through and hit the reset button, but I think we've certainly hit the reset button on the powertrain, both the engine, the clutch, the transmission, all that stuff. All seems to be working just great. Uh, now I'll get it registered, insured, and get it on the road, and uh, well, I'll start messing with the other stuff in other videos. I have other Element videos besides this one that I'll link down in the description for you. In fact, I believe I have a whole playlist at this point. If you have questions about the tools or parts or anything that I used in this video, check the description. I often put that stuff down there along with additional information. There's also a link to airatthecarguy.com, which is where I ask you to go if you have automotive questions. Thank you so much for watching today. I hope you enjoyed it. Be safe, have fun, stay dirty, and I'll see you next time.